Is that a fish? No way. Oh, it is. It is a fish. It is one. Right as I dropped in that rock pile. Come on, bring it in. Bring it in. What do we got? Well, how's it going, everybody? And welcome back to TRF. Oh, gosh. Good one, folks. Good one. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, my main camera back there died. Shoot. You know what, folks? I'm confident enough that I have this fish hooked well. I'm going to leave my bail open and let that fish run. Get me a new battery. And you'll see in this video why I'm so confident that I can be reeling in a fish. Here we go and not lose him. As I was saying, everybody, welcome back to TRF. On today's episode, we're gonna talk about the football jig. Everything you've gotta know about it and why I think this football jig I'm throwing is one of the best that's ever been made. Oh yes, beautiful smallmouth bass right there on the football jig. I stink and love this lure, and I think after this video, you will too. My name's Tyler, and let's talk about it. Well, how's it going everybody and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. My goal here on this channel called TRF is to help you guys become better bass anglers no matter where you live with every single video that I make. I love making videos in my bass boat like I will today. I love making videos in ponds, on kayaks, all over the place. And so if that sounds like you, somebody who wants to improve in their bass fishing skills and knowledge, hit that subscribe button. I'm excited today y'all because we're going to talk about one of my favorite deep lures and by deep I mean fishing in deeper water and that is the football jig and make sure y'all stay to the end because we have an amazing video of fish catching for you guys holy smokes we're going to talk what it mimics we're going to talk why you throw it we're going to talk where you throw it we're going to talk how you work it and set the hook which are both very important especially with this football jig which i believe is one of the greatest football jigs ever made as i always say here on the channel any videos that i have that are kind of close to this one or applicable to this one maybe supplementary to this one are going to be linked in the video description below along with everything y'all ever need to know so whether it's discount codes for all my sponsors basically all of them are trf afco blue storm pro guide lou strike King, all those codes are down in the description below as well as all the tackle that I'm going to be using in today's video now if you still have bass fishing questions after watching this of course this is just one topic make sure you guys are always searching on YouTube Tyler's real fishing and then fill in the blank with whatever topic you want to know about odds are I've made a video about that and I want you guys stand right here on this channel for your instruction so let's jump into it what is the football jig well the football jig is a jig maybe this is one of the first bass fishing videos you've ever watched a jig is basically kind of like a shortened word for a longer word and that is a jig head jig head is a piece of lead or tungsten attached to a hook and a jig at least in the bass fishing terms usually has some sort of silicone or rubber skirt that is attached to the jig near the head here at the top and usually there's some kind of weed guard to keep the weeds rocks and sticks from snagging on that hook so that is what a jig is and the reason why we call this one specifically a football jig is because the head of the jig is designed to look like a football not necessarily because a football shape is more appealing to a fish but because because a football shape allows it to dig down in the bottom and cause more commotion and presence to those fish than any other jig out there. The football jig is the best deep water jig possible and it can catch some giant bass. As a matter of fact, this is one of what I call the, the bigger presence lures. This one, big swim baits, big top waters, big worms. That's what I call my big lures. And I bring these things out when I want to get on a bigger quality of fish. No matter if I'm in a bass boat, a kayak, john boat, or fishing from the bank, of course, you have to have access to deeper water and usually rocks as we'll get into to throw the football jig but it's just a big fish catcher in my experience the majority of the time a football jig is imitating a deep bluegill or a deep crawfish i know that i've said before that some jigs like swim jigs and, and vibrating jigs can imitate some kind of bait fish i have never seen this lure right here the football jig to uh, on a broad level, imitate a bait fish. A minnow, a, a gizzard shad, a cisco. I don't think a football jig imitates that. That is why you almost never see, at least I've never seen or used, a white colored, white variation of a skirt on a football jig. Most of the time it's going to be green pumpkins, browns, black and blues, that's gonna imitate the forage that is down there on the bottom. Now you're gonna see in some of the fish catches in this video, a few of the fish were suspended and this color just so happened to look like a perch. 
Most of the time though, this is not going to be a lure that you throw for suspended bass. I just had a few really cool smallmouth bass that were suspended that were chasing around perch and eating those. And this thing falling down the water column must have looked like a big perch to them that is an easy snack. So most of the time though, the football jig is going to represent something on the bottom. And because it's meant to imitate something big on the bottom, I'm almost always throwing a full size Strike King Rage Craw on the bottom of this jig. Now before we get into talking about where to throw this thing, how to work it, and how to set the hook, which are all very important parts of fishing a football jig, I've got to talk about this specific jig right here made by Outcast Tackle. There are a lot of football jigs out there on the market to choose from, a lot of cool colors and designs, but I have not found more confidence in the ability to get good casting distance, to have good hookup ratio, and keeping fish pinned all the way back to the boat than I have with this football jig. And it comes with three really key factors that make it an incredible product. The first part of the jig that makes it unique is going to be this front area right here on the head. It has a concave, what they're calling a rocking notch. And it is strategically placed to allow the jig to deflect off of cover, Stand up on its head when you give it a little bit of pressure and when you rip it off the bottom it has a super erratic jump which I have seen elicits big bass to strike. The second part that makes this jig special is going to be what's called a frog cut silicone skirt. It is not rubber, it is not thick silicone, it is a very thinly cut silicone skirt that doesn't take very much movement at all to get that skirt to wave and flow and when it sits down there on the bottom it is basically spread out there and gives the bait a huge presence like I mentioned which attracts those bigger bass. And the last part which is actually the most important of this jig I've never seen this in a jig before, and I'm saying I fished a lot of them. It has what's called a Gamagatsu, the hook company, a Gamagatsu O'Shaughnessy hook. I don't know who O'Shaughnessy is. He's probably some Irish dude, but the O'Shaughnessy hook is incredible. It is a more light wire hook, and so we're going to talk about hook set. It requires a lighter hook set than most jigs, but the way that it is designed, I'm actually going to take off my Rage Craw trailer here, but by taking off the trailer, I can show you guys the, the, the shank of the hook goes straight for a long ways and then turns very quickly and like I, like I mentioned is made of a lighter wire material and so I can kind of flex this jig with my fingers which normally you wouldn't say you want to do but when you set the hook right it gets those fish pinned so well and I, I don't think I've lost but maybe two fish on this individual jig right here and I think I've caught like 36 or 38 fish haven't exactly been keeping track but it is a lot of fish i've been fishing in minnesota for an entire month i have not changed jigs once i've only bent out the hook a little bit maybe on one or two hook sets and i got the fish in the boat and the hook was a little bit bent out took pliers bent it back in this thing has lasted me a long time and the hookup ratio is crazy good and the landing percentage is crazy good i have been really really impressed with this football jig now when it comes to colors and sizes what do i like to throw most of the time, like I mentioned, I'm going to be throwing browns, green pumpkins, uh, black and blues if the water's dirty. But my favorite color is this one right here. I've got to get the, uh, the website up. I don't exactly know what color it is. I think it's black and brown amber. That's what it is. This here is black, brown, amber. It's got a little bit of black in it, a little bit of a, of a yellow kind of chartreuse and then a lot of brown, and the head is brown. And I just found this thing mimics a lot of crawfish species, a lot of bluegill, and today, Somehow it imitated perch. And I know in talking with the guy from Outcast, they don't sell a whole lot of three quarter ounce jigs and he's just confused as to why. Because if you fish a football jig a lot and really any style of jig, three quarter is a really good weight. I know for some reason anything above a half kind of scares people. People love throwing three eighths ounce, half ounce, maybe five eighths ounce, but three quarter people are like, oh no, that's way too heavy. I'm just telling y'all because the point of a football jig is to be down there on the bottom for the majority of your retrieve, if not all of your retrieve, dragging it, bumping it into things, you want a heavier jig. I have not found any downsides, even in fishing in like 8 to 10 feet of water with using a 3 quarter ounce football jig, it allows me to keep that bait down there on the bottom a lot easier than a half ounce does. Now where do you throw a football jig? You're probably watching this video and thinking, Tyler, I fish ponds, or I've got a really grassy pond, or it's got some rocks in it, some wood. Where do I employ the football jig as opposed to other jigs, like an Arky style, a skipping jig, a swim jig? Well, this is definitely not a swim jig, so you shouldn't be throwing the football jig in shallow grass, shallow uh, around docks, you know, shallow stuff like that, and swimming it back to the boat. That is not what it's meant for. 
You should also not be skipping it under docks. That's not what the football jig is meant for. And it's really not meant to be fished in any kind of vegetation. Deep vegetation, it can work. You can throw it out there. The majority of the time though, this here is a rock, gravel, sand with maybe a little bit of wood jig. You wanna be throwing this out there, letting it sink to the bottom, dragging it back, feeling everything down there. And hopefully, once you pull it over one of those rocks, one of those boulders, as you're, as you're ripping it across a, a gravel flat, a fish tracks this thing down and eats it. That's the whole goal of the football jig. I throw it on 17 pound fluorocarbon. I found that 17 is just a really good all around fluorocarbon for my setup. I throw it on a standard bait casting reel. This here is the Lou's Custom Pro Speed Spool. I have loved this thing. I actually got this one as a prototype reel and that is why it has these more flat handles to them. I don't think Lou's sells these handles yet, but they hopefully will soon because I'm promoting the heck out of them. I love these handles. And then I have the brand new Mark Rose Signature Series Rod. And this is actually his Carolina Rig Rod. It is a seven foot five, medium heavy, fast action rod. And I've just found this rod right here. When you pick it up at the store or you, you first tie it on your, your line, you might think, Tyler, this thing's a little stiff, but this rod here is a parabolic type rod. So when you set the hook, it bends almost all the way down to the, to the second to last or the last guide, which allows a big, what I call load into those fish. So you're not getting a little bit of tip. And if you say, let's say you set the hook too hard, you're gonna rip the hook out of those fish's mouth. This rod has a good long bend to it that allows an even hook set all the way through the hook set. And you'll see in a few of these fish catches, when I set the hook, I don't have to like keep going with the hook set. I set the hook, and I got them pinned and then I just reel them on in. And so as you'll see here in a second, I don't have to set the hook that hard with this rod. It's really just like a wacky rig hook under a dock or a light Texas rig around some shallow vegetation, even though I'm in 20, 25 feet of water. So you do have to reel down all of your slack as far down as you can go and give them a big sweeping hook set, but you don't have to give them the business. A lot of football jigs have big, heavy, beefy hooks. And I found that when you set the hook really hard with those, you might get them pinned, but then as soon as they come up to jump, you have created a big old hole in their mouth and that is where this O'Shaughnessy hook comes into play is that it makes a very small hole in their mouth but it still keeps them pinned with that proper hook set. So like I mentioned, all this stuff will be linked down in the video description. I am excited for y'all to see these fish catches and if you're curious about how to fish a skipping jig, how to fish a swim jig and how to fish just your average everyday style of jig, I have that video linked in the description below as well as a video on how to put the proper jig trailer on your jigs. I say we head out in the water and see some catches i'm excited for you guys we'll see you out there all right we are pulling out line after a long cast to let the football jig settle to the bottom i'm watching my line and it is no longer going out so we are now at the bottom click my spool and i'm going to slowly drag just like this kind of depends which side of the boat i'm on which side i drag but usually i like to stand on this side of the boat here oops kind of my rod tip down usually not rod tip up i'll talk about that in a second when i hit a boulder but usually oh right there but right there i've hit a boulder as i just said I'm gonna go rod tip up and kind of snap the, the jig over the boulder, let it fall back down again, and then go straight back to dragging. I usually drag from like here to here, rarely drag this far here, because if a fish ever bites it, I guess I could reel in really fast and, and go set the hook, but I'd rather have less, less room to reel in. So I do, I do more of like a three foot drag really, really slowly, making sure I'm keeping contact with the bottom, which I was not there at the end of that cast. So gotta find my waypoint again. I think it's out there, triangulate a little bit. I'm on one way point, I think the other one's that direction, so make a long cast and let that boy sink and repeat the process. Pretty dang easy, it's just a drag lure. When you feel a rock or you feel a stick, put your rod tip up and snap it over. It'll hop over that stick or that rock and then you go right back to dragging. Oh, I got one on the fall. I got one on the fall. I was wondering why my lure was falling so far. It wasn't falling, it was just swimming. And I think it's a, it's a huge one. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, right on the waypoint. Literally cast right to it. Did y'all see that? Did y'all see that jump? Holy smokes, this thing is big. Oh, ah, we get it, we get it, you're grande. Bring it in the boat, yes sir. Yes, sir. Look at the absolute chunkasaurus right there, boys and girls, on the football jig. As you can see, even smallmouth bass, while it's normally a large mouth lure for me, like I mentioned, even smallmouth can get it absolutely down there. Like this dude, 
four pounder, four pound smallie, has it choked. I was able to get the hook out, but it was deep hooked, so I'm gonna let the uh, beautiful smallie go. But that one would go almost four pounds on the football jig. Goes, there she goes. All right, just took a little bit of a poke. Yeehaw, folks. That jig got that fish down in the, in the gullet. That's how far these fish can eat it. Way down there. Gosh, dang it. Holy smokes. Gosh, man. I wanna catch them on the bottom for y'all, but literally every single time I make one cast to my waypoint, my first cast, one eats it on the fall. <laughs> I promise you, you're supposed to catch them when you're dragging it, not when it's fallen. 17 pounds, oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, okay. I'm not gonna boat flip him. I think he's got it good. But... Yes! Ho oh, ho ho! Yes, baby! That one might go five pounds! Holy cow! Wow! And look at how he ate that football jig. It's stinking down his gullet. That's a five pounder. I think it's five. I don't know. It's heavy. Heavy and thick. Holy smokes. And that football jig, y'all, is absolutely gone. I have pliers for this one. Here we go. Caught him out, and that is one heck of a smallmouth. Wow. Let me get the scale on this guy. 4.45. That right there ties my PB smallmouth from a few years ago in Texas. Oh my gosh. That thing is stinking awesome. I'm gonna get a, you know, I'm gonna box this one. Looks healthy. And uh, we'll get a picture with a nice camera later. Don't worry, folks. We're gonna take good care of that fish. Only leave it in there for a few minutes. I just wanna get out of the wind and out of filming this video to get a better picture. And after I rig up my trailer here, I'm gonna show you guys that the hook is not bent. Even after three big smallmouth bass, that hook right there is not bent out at all. So with the right hook set, not too hard, but not too light, just a nice, regular Texas tree hook set, even in deep water, you're gonna find yourself to have a very, very durable, easy hook, fish hooking jig. So let's get back out there. And I realized one thing I haven't really mentioned is the reasoning for a long cast is because the closer you get to the boat or to the bank, the more your line is gonna go from being like this from the, the lure to your rod tip to being like this. And it is much, much harder to keep your, your lure in contact with the bottom if your line is like this from your rod tip to your bait as opposed to like this. So the smaller you can make that angle, the easier it'll be to keep contact with the bottom, thus the reason for the super long cast. There's one. There's one. Ate it on the fall. That is awesome. The first cast you get in there, that fish does not know how to handle itself. That was cool. That was cool. Bring it in here, 17 pound line. Boat flip, yes! Yes, yes, yes! Look at that fish, y'all. Oh, sorry, we got some water on the lens. Big old smallmouth bass with the jig in his face. Heck yeah. Beautiful, now we got two fish for a picture. Let's go take that picture and we'll be right back. Gosh, there's a big one. There's a big one. He ate it high in the water column. I did use live scope for that one. That was cool. That was cool. This thing could be huge. This thing could be big. Yep. Yep. Big enough. Okay. Bring it in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh. Another four pounder on the football jig. This is crazy. And I see that he spit up. Oh my goodness. They're eating little perch. And I didn't notice it. My football jig kind of looks like the little perch they're eating. I'm gonna go pick up that perch here in a second. Wow, big old Minnesota chunkers, y'all. All right, so the little perch that the smallmouth spit up is classic little perch colored like that, and that's my football jig. So mine's a little bit darker. Honestly, it might kind of help with the presence, you know, make allow allowing them to see it in the water, find it in the water. That is cool. I'm catching perch eating bass with a football jig suspended. Wow. Let's keep it going, boys. There's another one. Wow. I found a school of them, folks. Am I recording back there? I'm not. Now I'm recording back there. That is two in a row, folks. And the bummer is I'm bringing the school with me. So I'm trying to actually reel this guy in a little bit faster. Well, or not. Kind of big. Kind of big. Kind of big. Found a school of offshore largemouth. Yes! Another three pounder. Ha ha ha. Beautiful Minnesota largemouth bass right there. And once again, y'all, I've caught 
what has to be 30 plus fish on this one football jig. And because of the quality of the jig head and my perfect hook set, I can catch fish like this over and over. What a time. There's one. Yes, sir, on the same exact rock pile. I got one dragon. Hey, hey, hey. He's not very big, but he is a smallie. Actually, <laughs> he kind of is big. <laughs> I don't know, not, not tiny, but not very small either. And you know, guys, one thing that I've been really impressed with, and I know that Outcast designed it this way, is that this jig with this hook design, very hard to throw the lure. A lot of football jigs with their big heavy head, the fish can easily sling it out of their mouths. This football jig, y'all, I don't lose fish on it. It's incredible. Oh my gosh, that right there. Three and a half pound smallie. Stinking biggin. Oh, this is awesome. Catching them dragging, catching them suspended, all kinds of ways. There we go. Knew it, knew it. I told you guys, that's a biggin, that's a biggin, that's a biggin. Stay down, stay down, buddy, stay down. I need you to finish the video with. Ha <laughs> ha That was cool. Saw the rock pile out there. Oh, oh, it's a largemouth. It's a largemouth. Wow! A bonus largemouth to finish the video. Not a giant, but a chunky dunk. That right there, folks, is one heck of a way to end our football jig instructional. If y'all learned something, hit that subscribe button. My goal is to help you guys catch more fish, become better anglers, and of course, become more efficient anglers. So if you feel like you did that today, hit the subscribe button. And if you're just here for the entertainment, I hope this entertained you today. If it didn't, you might want to check your pulse because you might not be alive. But with this fish right here, we're going to see you guys next time right here on TRF.